Hi, me again. And I thought I'd try something a bit different for this video with you guys. Normally it's just me sitting here gassing about the TV license. But I've got my laptop here and I've got a few interesting news stories that I think maybe we could talk about. Some TV license stuff and some not TV license stuff. Let's have a look. Okay, first up from everybody's favourite newspaper, The Sun. Off licence fee, BBC blasted for splashing £125,000 on booze for staff after licence fee row. Let's take a look. Thirsty workers ran up a £73,000 bar tab while £33,000 went on buying in beer and cider or fourteen grand on bubbly. This is what your TV licence is being spent on. This is how much they respect the money that people pay them from their hard-earned wages you directly fund the BBC and this is how much they respect you just by spunking money like this scum scum lockdown loins smart chastity devices could be hacked trapping a man's penis inside metal cage a bug in a smart chastity belt for men left users at risk of having their genitals permanently locked in the cage <laughs> Love it. The sex toy is billed as the world's first app-controlled chastity device and is reportedly used by tens of thousands of people across the globe. Now, if you've ever used one of these, then you deserve to have your penis locked up forever because that's what your missus has done to you. She's locked your cock away forever and taken any sense of manhood that you've got. Unbelievable. How does this exist? <laughs> okay, up next. Now, if you've got Amazon Prime, did you watch the new Borat movie that came out? I watched it, I thought it was all right. But there was one bit in there which was absolutely bloody shocking when Borat's pretty young blonde daughter was interviewing Rudolph Giuliani. And he was gonna, well, I'll show you. This is the scene, very attractive, lovely girl, and she's been terribly flirty with him on purpose. If you've got to watch the film to know why she's being flirty with him, I won't spoil it for you. At the end of the interview, she says, we need to remove the mic, and uh, would you like to go to the bedroom and have a whiskey? And this is the bit that happens. So you can see, look, he's touching her. You know, he's, you can see he clearly thinks, look, he thinks something is gonna happen. You can tell, you can just tell, look. She's fiddling with him, it's provocative. Now watch what comes, look. He's got his hand down his pants. Any minute now, he would have got his cock out. Guaranteed, he was getting his cock out. They made out like Borat broke, broke in to disrupt everything. But he was on guard because that bloke was going to get his cock out and he had to jump in quick. He had to jump in quick. Shocking. So obviously after that, dirty old Giuliani had to come out and say something. So this is what everybody's favourite newspaper had written about it. Borat star Sachin Baron Cohen responded to Rudy Giuliani and urged people to make their own mind up about the former New York City mayor's appearance in the film. Giuliani believes he did nothing inappropriate despite getting caught with his hand down his pants inside a hotel room with a supposed 15 year old in the film. You know, Giuliani can say whatever he wants, but if you watch that scene in the film, it was a matter of seconds, I think, before he got his cock out, and that's why Borat had to run in and stop it because that would have been terrible, terrible. Next up, another one from Britain's favorite newspaper. Not mine. But I do like Dear Deirdre. I'm quite the fan of Dear Deirdre. But this one stuck out. I thought I'd mention it because the title is In the Closet. I love my wife, but I think I'm gay and I don't know how to tell her. Dear Deirdre, I'm a man married to a woman, but I think I might be gay. I've tried my hard to just keep this secret, it's repressed me, blah, 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 blah. He had a couple of kids, and I was thinking, hang on a minute, this sounds like Schofield. Maybe she's got a bit of a backlog and she didn't get to it in time. But it's not Schofield. But it's a shame, that was the only reason I was reading it, I was hoping it was Schofield. But that did bring me on to this story. Ask Chloe. Since when has Chloe Maidley been qualified to be a bloody agony aunt? But, to be fair, she is answering the question that millions of us out there have been thinking and we wanted an answer to, we were just too shy to ask. So, 
I'm terrified to poo in front of my boyfriend and have to run to McDonald's every time I need to go. That's a question we've all needed answering for, for many years. Although, it must be said, most of the content in the Ask Chloe things are pictures of her very scantily clad. So, don't know. Don't know what all this is about. Let's see what the answer was. Oh, you need to listen to my podcast. So I can answer this better than you listening to Chloe's podcast. Okay, dead simple. We've got an ensuite in our house and uh, sometimes late at night there may be some churning and I need to let rip a bit because I've had a curry or something, right? Dead simple. If you're worried she's going to hear it, turn the tap on in the sink, turn the shower on, block the noise out, or tell her to put her earphones in, turn the music up because you've got some business to take care of. There you go, done. Chloe Madley is not as good an agony aunt as me. This was one that boiled my piss a little bit this week. Now, I quite like Jim Davis. I don't like all his stuff. Not that big a fan, but some of his stuff's funny. Some of his old stand-up was funny and that. And I've been watching him on YouTube a bit recently because he's got some interesting things to say and he's a good presenter. That was his job, wasn't it? But he's got this new thing. So he's not putting all his videos on YouTube. He just puts a bit of them on. And if you want to watch the rest of his videos, you have to go to his website and sign up because they're all hidden behind a paywall. But it just boils my piss. Look at this, right? Three ninety nine a month for Jim Davidson. How's that work? That is insane. For an extra two quid a month, you can have Netflix. You know, you get all the content in the entire world for an extra two quid a month. For two quid less, you can have just Jim Davidson. Ridiculous. I think he would get more sign-ups and make more money if you cut it to a quid or a quid 50. I think that would be fair. Maybe I'd even do it if it was a quid, a quid 50, but 3.99 a month, come on, Jim. Jesus. This one I thought was a little bit odd. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments if you think this is odd, right? Kanye West gives Kim Kardashian a creepy hologram of her dead father, Robert, that tells her, look at you, you're all grown up. Is this odd to you? This just seems odd to me. And this fucking annoys me. Does that not annoy you when you're on the news sites and the little video pops up and you piss off? Do you think this is odd? I think this is really odd. And my old man's dead. And the last thing I'd want is a creepy hologram of him telling me I'm a good boy or something. It's just odd. It's just odd. I don't know. But they're odd people, aren't they? So maybe that's normal behaviour for them. I don't know. So next up, there was a story that really boiled my piss. But I've just hit the link to show you guys, and look, whoops, it's been deleted. But we still have the Wayback Machine. So here we go. Self-love. I'm so beautiful that strangers lavish me with expensive gifts and bosses use me as eye candy. Now, you're gonna be expecting an absolute stunner here. All right, so you tell me if this girl is so beautiful that you think strangers should lavish her with expensive gifts. I mean, she's all right. Charlie 33 from Doncaster. She's all right, but look, I'll be honest, I've been dumped by a lot better than that. So I don't get it. I don't get it. I think the headline should read, Woman 33 from Doncaster is massively up her own arse and needs to get back to reality. That's what I would have put as the headline. Lee Mack's show, The Chop, cancelled after Nazi tattoos on contestants' face could be connected to far-right ideologies. Yeah, this was doing the rounds all week, wasn't it? This bloke on this reality show about woodwork had loads of white supremacist tattoos on his face, but no one thought to check that. That's fine. You can just put him on the TV. You don't need to check. I think this is the problem. There's too many reality shows now, and they struggle to get people for it. And standards are slipping. That's why reality shows are crap. Look at the last season of Britain's Got Talent. Bloody terrible, isn't it? Absolutely terrible. Also in the sun, a bit of TV license news for you. Nearly two-thirds of Brits say BBC's TV license fees should be reformed. Now, I didn't do a video on this because it's all over YouTube. So many people have made a video of it. I'm sure you saw it in the paper, or I'm sure you watched one of their videos. You don't need me doing it, do you? But it's good news, and it shows progress is being made. And all of us here that make the videos or share the videos on your social media, we've all helped to get public opinion shifted this far. Change is coming. I'm telling you, it's coming soon. So this one came up, and uh, I didn't like it at all. Look at the headline from The Sun. Fit for royalty, Kate Middleton and Williams' Kensington Apartments 
is actually a huge four-storey mansion with 20 rooms, a gym and a lift. Let's have a look. Look at it. Madness. So once the uh, TV license is abolished and my work here is done, the next thing I'm going to do is get the royal family abolished. I don't dislike them as people, but just because you're born into a family doesn't mean you're better than everybody else and that you can live a life of unbelievable extravagance and luxury even though you do very little work for it. So I'm next on the royals to get them, get them moving. Don't like them. What do you think? Do you like the royal family? Let me know in the comments below. Also, this week in TV Licence News, this popped up on one of the websites that I visit regularly, my friends over at TV Licence Resistance. What do you think of this? Can I see your ID again, please? What? Can I see your ID again, please? I'm not going to let you film it, no, because you're going to, what are you going to do with that? You have to ask my consent. No, I don't. No, I don't. You do? You're at my door, public. You're in public. Yeah, and I'm allowed to knock at your door. And, and you can leave, mate. Pardon? You're allowed to knock on the door, but you have to show me your ID. Now, personally, I think he talked a bit too much. You know, he didn't really incriminate himself. He was trying to be nice to the guy and everything, and that's lovely, but all the conversation was unnecessary. All he had to do, as soon as he knew the guy who was from TV licensing, pff, get the door shut. He's saying he's gonna take him off the database. That's never gonna happen, is it? It's never gonna happen. He's only gonna get marked on there as a mug or something for more visits. Get the door shut, get the door shut. Did a fair job, but you should've got that door shut a lot, lot quicker. I'm not the biggest fan of the BBC, as you well know, but I do quite like a bit of Louis Theroux. I don't like that ginger one, Stacey Dooley. I can't bloody stand her. When she's walking around all the poor people, have you seen it? And she's wearing a fucking Rolex cow. But I do quite like Louis Theroux. I stumbled across this one. It's on Documentary Heaven, which is a website that I wholeheartedly recommend. It's great documentaries and you can watch them free online without a TV license. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but Drinking to Oblivion is quite a sad one quite a sad one and it brought a lot of things home and it's made me think a bit about my drinking to be honest and maybe I do drink a bit too much but yeah but yeah this is my recommendation for the week I watched it I quite enjoyed it if you like a documentary Louis Theroux is pretty handy with documentaries as in just face it so uh, yeah it's my recommendation for the week if you want some other recommendations well, let's take a look at what's in my watch later thing on YouTube let's have a look no if I'll show farewell to it's been in there for ages I haven't watched that the story of Motley Crue, obviously, who killed the Essex boys. Uh, supersizers go water. I like the supersizers. If you never watched them, they have to live a life as a certain period in time and eat those foods. It's a food show, but it's the wartime one. It's quite good. Grey Wolf's good. I've watched that before, but it's back in there to watch again. It's a story about maybe Hitler didn't die at the end of the war. He jumped on a submarine and ended up in Argentina. It's very good, very good documentary. This lady's fantastic, the Italian grandma. She's really good. If you like uh, Italian food, that's worth a watch. What else have we got? An Evening with Jeremy Clarkson. I haven't watched that yet. Freedom Ship I was interested in, so that's been in there a while, I haven't watched it. Loads of Spanish stuff. I'm trying to learn Spanish. Oh, if you see, it says something about Amigos behind me on the sign. The missus is uh, doing a little bit on the internet now, and I forgot to forgot to change the lettering on the sign. So there. The other one I can recommend watching is this George Gammon guy. He's an economist. Well, I don't think he's a professional economist, but he talks about economics a lot, mostly from an American perspective. But it's dead interesting stuff. So give that a look, and. Uh, Maybe I'll keep this as a regular thing, maybe every week, every couple of weeks or something. If you enjoyed this kind of video, let me know in the comments below and, and I'll make some more. If you didn't, tell me in the comments below and I'll never make another one again. Thanks for watching.